Now the way we're going to solve this is using the time value of money. Now according to the time value of money, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Now think about that statement. A lot of people would have a issue with that. Most people would say, well, a dollar is a dollar, but it's not because the earlier that you receive the money, the more interest you can be earning on that money. So it's better to get the money sooner rather than later. So that's why a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. That's the time value of money. Because the longer it is until we get the money, we've missed out on the opportunity to earn that interest. Now in order to solve time value problems, we're going to utilize the time value tables. And there are four of these tables. There is a table called the present value of one, the future value of one, the present value of an ordinary annuity, and the future value of an ordinary annuity. Now these tables will give us everything we need to know to solve time value problems. And the great thing about it is that it's like a shortcut. It's going to take a problem that might have had 20 or 30 different calculations and simplify it to just one calculation. But the key is understanding what table to use. Believe it or not, that's the hardest thing about time value problems. The mathematics of it are actually very easy. You're just multiplying two numbers together. The real challenge is understanding the situation and thus understanding which table should be used. And we're going to have a lot of practice using these tables in our demo problem. We're going to look up on the tables and see the numbers that will be used on our bonds. But in this lecture, I just want to show you some examples of how these problems work. So look at this first example. We have a company here, and they want to have $1 million in 10 years. So 10 years from now, for whatever reason, they need a million dollars. Now they've looked around and looked at different investment opportunities, and they found a pretty risky investment opportunity that could pay 10% interest. So what they want to know is, how much money would they have to invest in order to reach their goal? Well, since that is a 10-year situation, Normally that would require about 10 different calculations, but if we use our shortcut and use our time value tables, we can simplify that into one calculation. Now think about what they're wanting to know here. They know how much money they want in the future. What they don't know is how much money do they need now in the present. So that makes this a present value of one problem. So all I have to do literally is write down that $1 million and look up a number from my present value of one table. In this case, the number I'm using is 0.3855. I calculate that and that gives me $385,500. Now what that means is, in the present, if they would invest $385,500, in a 10% investment, after 10 years, they would have a million dollars. So that answers that question. And it's such a simple and easy calculation. As long as I have the table and go to that table and get my number. And like I said, we're going to use those tables in our demo problem. The next example says a company has $385,500 to invest. They have a 10% investment opportunity. Question is, how much will they have in 10 years? Now, I chose that number for this example for a very particular reason. This is a future value problem. In this problem, they know how much they have now. They just want to know how much they're going to have in the future. So we write down the 385500 we got that number from a future value table. Like I said, we're going to use the tables in our demo problem. 
it is 2.5937 and look at this 999.871.35 so it's a little bit off because of the rounding but go back and look at the previous example the present value of that million dollars was 385,500 the future value of the 385,500 was close to a million dollars at the same interest rate and the same number of years so that shows you that when you do time value problems you can do those problems in either direction to get the future amount or the present amount it works either way now this example is a little different this company is going to make an annual payment of $100,000 in each of the next five years. The company has an investment opportunity at 10%. How much must be invested today in order to make all these payments? Well, think about it. Normally, if I have to make five $100,000 payments, normally that would cost me $500,000 but not if I utilize the power of compounding interest. What I'm going to do is make an investment in the present and based on that interest rate it won't quite cost me as much to make these payments. So to do this I'm going to use present value of an annuity. Now why is it annuity? Well every time you see that word annuity think about the word annual. Annuity means a series of annual payments. So see how this example is different than the other two. They don't just want a hundred thousand, they have to make five annual payments of a hundred thousand. So that changes the situation and makes it an annuity. So one hundred thousand times this number from the annuity table 3.7908 means it's really only going to cost three hundred and seventy nine thousand eighty dollars to make these payments now you have to be careful though if I had used a number from the present value of one table I would get the wrong answer I've got to use a number from present value of an annuity so that's why like I said the mathematics of these problems are very easy literally all you're doing is multiplying two numbers together the trick to it is understanding what table to use. That's really the hardest part. And then the final example, this is a company that wants to invest 10,000 every year for the next 10 years at 5%. How much will they have in 10 years? Well, normally, if I was going to invest 10,000 a year for 10 years, I would have about 100,000. But not when I have the power of compounding interest. I'll have more than a hundred thousand. How much more? Well, I take my ten thousand, I get my number from the future value of an annuity table, I would actually have a hundred and twenty five thousand seven seventy nine. So that's the way that works. So again, it's all about understanding the tables and that's what I want you to get from this particular lecture. Reading the problem, reading the situation very carefully and from that deciding what table is the appropriate table to use. And like I said, we're going to have some practice using these tables very soon when we do our bond demonstration problem.